Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, this first Saturday of the month of September, we offer this Eucharist honoring Our Lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Mother. She is a woman with unshakable faith because she always stood on the Word of God. And so in this Mass, as we listen to God's Word, let us also stand on the Word of God with faith, like Mary. To prepare ourselves to receive God's Word and receive the body of Jesus, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask Him for pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, 
may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you once were alienated and hostile in mind because of evil deeds. God has now reconciled you in the fleshy body of Christ through his death to present you holy, without blemish, and irreproachable before him, provided that you persevere in the faith, firmly grounded, stable, and not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, am a minister. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God Himself is my help. God Himself is my help. O God, by Your name save me, and by Your might defend my cause. O God, hear my prayer. Hearken to the words of my mouth. God Himself is my help. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord sustains my life. Freely will I offer you sacrifice. I will praise your name, O Lord, for its goodness. God himself is my help. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Your words, O oh Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While Jesus was going through a field of grain on a Sabbath, his disciples were picking the heads of grain, rubbing them in their hands, and eating them. Some Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them in reply, Have you not read what David did when he and those who were with him were hungry, how he went into the house of God, took the bread of offering which only the priests could lawfully eat, ate of it and shared it with his companions. Then he said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, Maybe you have noticed that for the past days, for the past weeks, we have been hearing stories of arguments between uh, Jesus and the Pharisees and the scribes. Especially in our gospel passage. 
And when we see the scribes and the Pharisees arguing with Jesus and his disciples, how did Jesus become victorious always? We will see that Jesus and his disciples always stood on the word of God. That is why they were victorious. And the Pharisees stood not on the word of God, but on the words of men. For example, in our gospel passage today, when Jesus was feeding his disciples on a Sabbath, the Pharisees criticized them, telling them that there is a law prohibiting them from picking grains so that you could eat on a Sabbath. They were standing on the laws of men. But Jesus, with conviction, told them that it is written also in the Word of God that David himself fed also his companions during a Sabbath. The Pharisees are standing on the laws of men, but Jesus was standing on the Word of God. And so towards the end of the gospel passage, Jesus proclaimed himself as the Lord of the Sabbath. My dear brothers and sisters, if we want to be victorious in this life, then we must always stand on the word of God. And we will be victorious, like Jesus, like his disciples. I know, my dear brothers and sisters, that during this time of pandemic, in this time of difficulty, we will be receiving many words of men. We will be receiving a lot of not very good news of bad news. Maybe you have received your result, the result of your test that you tested positive for COVID-19. It is such a bad news that sometimes you will feel that your world is crumbling down because of this. Maybe you have received a news that you have lost your job, that something bad had happened. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus is asking us today, in spite of all of these words of men that we receive, bad news that we receive, still stand on the word of God with conviction with faith, like Jesus in our gospel today. You see, whenever Jesus was doing his ministry, he will always hear words of people, Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, criticizing him, trying to bring him down. But Jesus stood on the word of God. That is why, he was always victorious against the words of men because he stood on the word of God. This is also the message of the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians in our first reading today. If we will look closely, St. Paul said, Brothers and sisters, remember that before your minds are full of evil, evil deeds, but now God has reconciled you 
through the death of Jesus Christ, provided that you persevere in the faith, firmly grounded, stable, and not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard. This is also the challenge of St. Paul. If you are firmly grounded, you are stable, and you are not shifting from the faith and the hope that we received, then we will be victorious because Jesus has already died for our sins. He died and suffered for our healing, for our wholeness of body, of mind, and soul. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, today, the Word of God tells us if we stand on God's Word, then our faith will be unshakable. It will be unmovable. Despite of all the words of men that you will hear, despite of the bad news that you will receive almost every day, the Word of God tells us today, stand firm. Be stable. Do not be, un do not be movable from your faith. Stand on the Word of God. Today is the first Saturday of the month, and we celebrate this Mass in honor of our Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And uh, I am sure many of us are longing for our first Saturday devotions, the pilgrimages that we used to do during First Saturday. And whenever we see the Blessed Virgin Mary, I am sure we always see the image of our mother as a soft, a beautiful woman with soft features. The features of a woman. The soft features of a woman. And most of the time, we would see her as someone who is soft. But let us remember that in the Gospel, Mary was a strong woman. She suffered, yes. She heard a lot of things being told against her. Ah, she became pregnant without a husband. Her life was in danger. They were going around because she was about to give birth and no one accepted them. And then Herod was pursuing them to kill her baby. They ran to Egypt. She ran to Egypt. And later on, she suffered a lot, even, st even standing on the foot of the cross, watching her son being crucified and dying on the cross. But as we say in, in a beautiful antiphon, Stabat Mater, the mother stood on the foot of the cross. She did not grumble. She did not fell. She stood on the foot of the cross. Mary was a strong woman. Her faith is unshakable because she stood on the Word of God. She stood on the promise of God. My dear brothers and sisters, today, if you may hear a lot of bad words, bad news from other people, let us remember that in the midst of all this, Jesus stood firm on the word of the Father. St. Paul taught us 
to stand firm on the Word of God. And Mary showed us to stand firm on the promise of God. And our faith will be unshakable. Amen. Let us pray to God, our Father, who has called us all His sons and daughters to become free in His Son, Jesus Christ. For every petition, let us say, Let your word save us, O Lord. Let your word save us, O Lord. That the Christians may regard the commandments of God as doors to freedom from the sin and evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Let, Let your, your word save, save us, us, O Lord. Lord. That those who work in law enforcement and government may consistently place the welfare of the people above legalist legalistic concerns. Let us pray to the Lord. Let, Let your, your word save, save us, us, O Lord. Lord. That in worshiping the God whom we cannot see, we may not forget our needy brothers whom we see. Let us pray to the Lord. Let, Let your, your word save, save us, us, O Lord. Lord. That the Lord may heal those who suffer from various physical and spiritual maladies. Let us pray to the Lord. Let, Let your, your word save, save us, us, O Lord. Lord that the dead may now rest in the company of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Let, Let your, your word save, save us, us, O Lord. Lord. Lord God, let every command of yours be to us an invitation to love and to serve our brothers and sisters, to understand and to respect to guide and to be guided. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god 
It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints. And especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us, through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep 
in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is Yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am, I am not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Panginoon, 